All right, lads, so it's finally time for us to update the tier list. The last time I've done a tier list video was like, what, two or so years ago. It's been a very long time since I've updated one of these. And originally, I did plan to update it every single month. And then I kept putting off to the point now that I haven't updated it in close to two years, which is kind of crazy. But right now is the best time to do it. We have the beginner's guide coming out a couple days time. I just made a real guide and 2022 just started. We have some hype characters coming out. People want to know where I think these characters place in a tier list. And going forward into 2022... I will be updating this tier list probably not every month, but at the very least every three or so months when we do get a decent enough characters to add to the list. That said though, this tier list will be breaking down by attributes. So for those who want to just skip to a certain attribute, look at the timeline and you can just jump to them. Starting off for now though, we're going to be talking about the heart attribute. And because we have so many characters in each attribute, I'm going to have to skip past some cards and I can't really explain why in depth on why I did place them. But this is a general understanding of where I think the characters place. They are kind of sorted by ranking, although don't take too big and in the ranking, especially in the lower ranks. I definitely think S tier and SS rank are ranked perfectly from the way I stand uh, by my ranking. So that said, let's jump straight into it, starting off with the hard view. So looking at DNC tier, these are characters that are just not really worth using unless they're your favorite character. Like, some of them are obviously better than others. You know, these, like, three cards, I think, are definitely more usable compared to these bottom tier characters. For the most part, most of these characters lack damage and range and just speed clearing for the most part. Some of them have very low damage, strong attacks, range, etc. There's really no reason to use these characters unless they are your favorite, in, at least for C tier. D tier, yeah, probably just don't even use them. B tier, though, I feel like are characters that are pretty decent. They maybe just needed one or two things to make them a lot better to get into A tier, and I feel like if you do invest into these characters, you might actually be able to use them a lot more often. I feel like maybe I'm downplaying Biakio too much, so I'm actually going to push him up to A tier. Uh, Biakio's not bad, he just has really bad, like, iffy strong attack, right? His, his SA1 has really inconsistent damage, it's probably the worst strong attack one you can have in the game. His SA2 is a... Vacuum Vortex, very similar to Mashiro, but on the downside is that he doesn't have any stats on on that SA2, and it's also a shield move, which is okay, but you know, now we have characters with, like, plus 5 shield moves for themselves, and plus 3 for their teammates, but for Byakuya, it's only plus 1 for his teammates. So it's not really that good, and then it's SA3 is pretty good, right? Um, as far as premium characters go, yeah, you're not bad. You know, he has 40% Berserker, I believe. He also has 20% Havoc, so that's why I did push him up. Uh, looking at Beta, though, we have some just old used to be the best characters. Like, if you look back, like, two or so years ago, like, these five characters here, Toshiro to Mayuri, were probably some of the best characters in the game. But obviously, they have slowly fallen off due to, again, lack of damage, range, most importantly. And also, to a certain extent, some survivability. A tier, though, I feel like these are some pretty good characters overall. Like, you can definitely use them, and I actually see myself using these characters more often than not. Although, I would say that I haven't really used these both Ichigos, although I did place them a bit higher, maybe higher than I should, because I believe they're actually still pretty good. This Ichigo did get a pretty good resurrection that now makes him actually really usable, although you don't really see him all too much. And then Mugetsu, I feel like has gotten better over time, thanks to the fact that IT does really encourage you to inflict status elements. He does have weakening, and he also does have a you know, 20% heal for himself every time you get into a new room. I really like that. I like stuff like that, and that's why I put him in A tier. Looking at the two Nad characters in A tier, though, or I guess in this case, the three Nad characters, right? Uh, these are normal attack characters, ones that you want to prioritize attack stat. We have Renji, Chad, and also Soifon. Soifon's really good. It's just unfortunate she came out at a time where Guard Break wasn't thrown onto Nad characters, and if it was, she'd be perfect. The good thing about her, though, is that she isn't a Ranka killer, so if you ever do put her against a Ranka enemies, and then she doesn't need killer because she's melee based, right? She has no need for guard break. But when you put her against any other enemy that's not on Rancom, you're going to need to break your guard. And as far as my ranking goes, I find it really hard to place a night character in S tier when they don't have guard break. If they did, though, it'd be grand. And I feel like Soifun is probably going to be the highest character when it comes to net characters that don't have guard break. She's actually really good. She's a good kit, good damage output, very good range, too. As far as night characters go, she's definitely one of the better ones. Um, Eva. Only really just doesn't have um, Havoc. That's really it. Like, very good strong attacks, good damage output, just lacks Havoc, which is extra 20% range on his strong attacks, and most importantly, does lack killer. But he's not bad. He's not bad. Honestly, I think he's actually pretty good. I like him. Uh, same can be said for Kimpachi. Kimpachi's got some good damage numbers overall. I feel like he's also gotten better over time, especially considering how rare special transforming is. He is the last character in the game, alongside his banner, that do have transforming specials. And I feel like that's actually pretty good and worth mentioning, because it just means his overall... Clear time is a lot faster, right? He can solve him the whole room, and then now he has all his strong attacks back, and now he's hitting harder. I feel like he's actually a character that's gotten better over time, and he also works really well as a side lane in Guild Quest, for example. Uh, someone like, uh, what's her name? 
Sanji Maru. Sanji Maru is also a character that gotten better over time, especially in IT, because IT does encourage you once more to inflict status elements, and she does inflict status elements, as besides her SA2, it's a shield move, but she has an increased chance to do so, and I think that's worth talking about. She's a very good character for IT, very safe character overall with the shield move, and good strong attack 1 and 3 to make up for the fact that she does have a slower than normal SA2 recharge, so overall pretty good character. Unfortunately, though, she doesn't have any devastation, so her soul bomb does look lack a bit of damage, but I feel like her overall kit, it just makes up for it, and if you're playing her in co-op, for example, attention tie will definitely do the job, unless you're trying to nuke through multiple waves. Now, moving on to S tier, let's talk about them. So, Honestly, uh, going back to the Nat characters, how I won't put a Nat character in S tier if they don't have Guide Break. And the same can be said for SP characters. If an SP character doesn't have Havoc, I don't want to put them in S tier. But I have made a few exceptions, in this case, Zangetsu. Zangetsu is really good. You know, SA1 Lunge, not the most ideal strong attack, but it's probably like the second, third best strong attack you could have as an SA1. Obviously, we would prefer a beam forward, but SA1 Lunge is great. SA2 is a 960. SA2 is a 800 AoE around him, and then it's SA3 is a full screen. I believe he has two immunities. He has read around good dodges, and I believe has a 40% Berserker and 20% extra strong attack damage to his entire team if you are a Heart Story Bar. And there are a lot of Heart Story Bars that take advantage of that. So he's actually a very good like damage dealer so and support character at the same time. Really cool premium character, definitely someone you want to have, and someone that I'm, I unfortunately don't have, that I really would like to pick up. Shuhei, I feel like, is probably going to get lower as we go by. I feel like his strong attacks aren't anything too great anymore. SA1 is a lunge, SA2 is like a vacuum type of vortex. I could maybe put him in A tier, but I feel like his value is still there. He's one of the few characters that can literally just nuke very hard. And uh, there's been so many content where you really want that, that Soul Bomb, right? And if you don't know, his Soul Bomb does have an 80% debuff, and it's only to, unfortunately, one wave. But in stuff like Epic Raids, Shuhei is always going to be your best character. He is currently a bonus right now for the Toshiro Epic Raids, but even when he isn't, let's say you're going against the ultimate Epic Raid of an Awakened Epic Raid, right? You still want to bring at least one or two Shuheis because he makes your team do so much damage so i really value his soul bomb a lot and i feel like in terms of his gameplay he's not that bad he's still very good for the most part and then moving on to that we have the two other characters that being apache and chojuro two characters that you don't really see played much but they're just very good characters both have a good sa1 more so chojuro he does have a 3000 lead beam apache has a 1200 by 1200 they both have a 960 and they both have a 1200 full screen very good damage output across the board from both of them the only thing that's bad about them to a certain extent is the fact that they don't have a good killer apache has a, a spider killer and chojuro has captain killer not the most ideal thing for pve content but i don't think it ruins them i feel like they have good strike attacks and damage output to make up for the fact that they don't have a good pve killer but you can also use them in stuff like guild quest for example or if they're ever a bonus in epic raids you can also use them there even outside of that i do see myself using apache a lot because she does have weakened defense personally i did put apache over chojuro because she does have a team heal with i believe weakened defense on a soul bomb which overall just makes them more usable for harder content where you need to use your soul bomb for example right and then the next three characters for s tier are going to be your nad characters so i feel like it just gets better over time right you have a nad character good damage output with guard break one of the best auto characters in the game right now as far as the heart attributes do go. And you have Tokinata. He's a ranged character. Now, when it comes to me comparing Nad characters, I definitely prefer ranged characters as they are more safer to use because they're ranged, they have an easier time autoing content. And unfortunately, as far as Nad characters do go, melee-based Nad characters, you really can't use them in co-op content, hard co-op content, because you have to get up close and personal and that could cost you a lot of revive candles because you might be dying more often than not. Ranged characters have a much easier time as they can just sit back, use their Nad string, and keep themselves safe for the most part. There's been a lot of times where I do auto cop content with someone like Tokinada, whereas someone like Grimjow might struggle a bit. But I do believe Grimjow is probably the better character to use when it comes to PvE content in terms of single player content, right? But Tokinada, just very good damage output, range transforming special, which inflicts weakening. When he does transform, all his strong attacks come back. SA2 resets, it is a boost to very powerful Nad character. Only thing he really does lack when it comes to newer characters is just poison, that's about it. Masaki is basically just a better Tokinada, right? She has poise, I believe she has a higher damage output, and her SA2, which is a boost, also comes with a shield, which is just, again, better survivability. So, that's basically the S tier. Now, let's talk about the SS tier. So... Let's talk about Nini. Maybe you might you might think Nini is a bit too high, but I feel like the value this character has is just insane. Outside of the fact that obviously she is a super link shot character, we're not here to talk about that. I feel like she's actually just very good. She has a 3000 MP. She has a crawling vortex SA2, which isn't ideal. It's not ideal, and it probably would. It's one of the only things she has that I'm kind of contemplating. Maybe I should put her in the top of S. 
right? Maybe she shouldn't be near Aizen, but her SA2 is still definitely usable, and her SA3 is a full screen, but the main thing about this character is the skill she does have. She has a 60% devastation on top of having Frenzy plus 2. Every 5 seconds, she has a chance to inflict weakening, and then she has an increased chance to inflict weakening against 2 uh, elements, right? Against two affiliations. Sorry, but killer and no affiliation and she herself also does have two killers. This makes her very good for something like IT outside of the fact that again, once more, she is a super link character. If she didn't have the super link short skills, I personally would be using her a lot in stuff like IT because she's just very good in there and IT right now kind of is a meta for a lot of stuff because it's one of the harder content in the game and her being able to have two killers, which is great and then being able to inflict weakening more often than not when you do have killer is also great and in my opinion, it makes her a very powerful character, someone you definitely want to have. But then, even though she is in the same tier as, you know, Aizen, for example, I think there definitely is a big gap between the two, because Aizen is just on another level. He is literally the best character in the game. He has Frenzy plus two, 20% full stam, which is great because all his strong attacks inflict drain and weakening and drain can heal you back to full stamina. He has a very easy time staying at full stam and altering hard content like Ultra IT, for example. His damage output's insane. He's just so perfect. And then I'm not even to mention his strong attacks. His SA1 is a 3000 limb beam with the added width of like having like a 1000 with SA1. It has really good range and distance and just girthness to it, right? <laughs> So his SA1, it's, it's amazing. His SA2 is a pretty much the best strike 2 in the game. It is a crawling vortex that tracks the enemies. And again, because it does inflict weakening and drain, there's a like almost a 100% chance you heal back up the full HP when you use that SA2 on a mob of enemies. It's insane. And SA3, it's just a full screen attack. He also does come with two killers, that being Captain and Sorry Bomb. He has Sharp to 2, so he's overall just amazing. He's very good in guild quests, epic raids, IT, IZ, anything you put this character against, he can clear it very easily, even one out of five so that's my heart tier list now let's move on to the power tier list and skipping past d tier these again just mediocre characters c tier are characters that are kind of just eh i feel like uh someone like the okura can definitely get pushed up once he does get a resurrection b tier are characters that are just again pretty decent that characters a tier you know, you got some good characters here too. Uh, going back to Toshiro, Toshiro right here, the Thousand Blood one, can definitely push the S tier once he does get a resurrection, and hypothetically, if he does get Havoc, then he's going to be great. Uh, you have some good-ish characters here. Maybe Gin should be higher. Maybe Gin should be lower. I don't really like the strong attacks this character does have, especially when combined with his SA1. And then now is a character that not a lot of people do appreciate. She is a very good support character when you use her the way you're supposed to use her. And overall, I feel like she's a great support character. Looking into S tier, let's start off with Kaname and Ginjo because they are very similar. Maybe I should put Kaname a bit lower, but again, going back to someone like the Tokimata again, um, I really feel like Nad Carriage with that arranged with Guard Break just instantly go to S tier, in my opinion, because how good they are. Uh, it just makes content a lot easier. They can auto IT or IZ, for example, and Kaname is actually pretty good. He does lack the damage output compared to someone like Ginjo, for example, but I don't think it's that big of a different, a big of a deal because you can always transcend him, get him to level 10 attack, and he's going to be doing a lot of damage regardless of his, you know, bruiser status. But I feel like he's pretty decent, might move him down over time, but Ginjo is also a very good NAD character with follow-up, makes him better for PvE content. He does have weakened defense on his soul bomb, overall making a very useful character for stuff like epic rates even when he isn't a bonus uh kikone very solid overall just lacks what some of the other characters have that are put above him uh nemu very powerful character very good strike attack sa1 is a lunge sa2 is a 960 sa3 is a 1204 screen around her then we have the machine society yoroichi and kokuto they are very similar in terms of their kit literally there's almost nothing different about them she has a boost sa2 which i think is actually pretty good but the reason why i did put Kokuto above someone like Yuluichi is because Kokuto has weakening, which I think is just better, and uh, she unfortunately flicks burn, which burn isn't that useful, so I feel like Kokuto just gets the short edge um, between these two characters. Moving on to Christmas Toshiro, very solid power card, um, very similar to Hikone, maybe I should put... <laughs> You know what, I'm going to put Kikone a bit higher because I feel like he's gotten better over time since the introduction of IT. And I feel like they're both very similar. I think they have, like, the exact same kit. I believe this Toshiro just has more going for him in terms of, like, the damage output, for example. So, yeah, Toshiro's just very good, very similar to Ikone. So, what makes Ikone good makes Toshiro good. Uh, the SA2 is probably the most, like, worst thing about them to a certain extent, but it's still very good regardless. And then we have the three... 
uh, power swiper killers. They're kind of like the meme. They're like very similar to the heart attribute when we have like Tokinada and then Masaki. One's just better than the other, even though they have like almost the exact same kit. The same can be said about these three characters. Um, this Byakuya, 3000 length beam forward. SA2 is a 960 distant AoE in front of him. And then his SA3 is a 1200 forward screen. And then you have Shinji, who has the exact same kit with Killer. Um, unfortunately, inflicts confusion, but he just has more damage. He also supports his team if you are power Soul Reaper. If you are also a power captain, so he just has more going from my opinion. And then you have Lie, who just does the exact same thing as these two characters, but with no status elements, but he does have guard break, he does have hit enemies, and he does also have a higher damage output. So yeah, it's basically just these three are basically tied for like second place in terms of that. Next up we have Rukia. Rukia, Rukia, let's talk about her. Unfortunately, she does like Marauder, and if she did have Marauder, I'd probably put higher than, than fifth fan of our shooter goal. Rookie is really good. She has a lunge SA1, a 960 SA2, and a, you know, full screen SA3. She inflicts freeze on everything. She has a 60% Berserker, um, with an extra 20% damage if you do hit a, a frozen enemy, for example. And then most importantly, she does have the Bankai button. The only character in the game right now to have that Bankai button, where it does transform her. And when she's transformed, she's only transformed for 20 seconds, by the way, she then hits even harder, because the mags of her strike attacks get increased. So she hits very, very hard, especially when you do inflict freeze, for example. In addition to that, when she does transform for the first 10 seconds in that transformed state, she has an increased chance to inflict a stat summon in this case freeze to any enemy and looking back at some of the other characters that we have talked about in the past someone like the senjumaru uh this ikone and also this toshiro and even need to a certain extent they only have an increased chance to inflict a stat summon against the enemies that they have killer against right in this case Rukia doesn't. She, it doesn't matter the killer. It's, just, it's only for 10 seconds, though. It comes out of downside, right? It's only for 10 seconds, but it doesn't matter who she hits. There's a very good chance she do inflict the freeze, for example. She also does have a Ranka and a Spider killer, making her one of the better characters in general to use for a Spider week. My go-to character makes it so easy because you basically just freeze every, every wave. You just freeze. It's insane. And then for IT as well, she's also great. Regardless of the killer, if you invest into this character whenever she does decide to come back, getting her 5-5 would make her pretty much useful in any IT quest regardless of killer because you're always going to have that increased chance to inflict status element which I think is very powerful. In addition to that too, she has a 20% team every time you go into another room. Very good survivability and also immunities to two status elements. That being I believe paralysis and weakening. Which is, oh, paralysis and free. No, weakening and freeze. So very powerful character. Unfortunately just lacks what these three characters do have. So let's talk about these three because this might be a hot topic. Even though I put Bruno above Ichigo and Ichigo above Kisuke, I do want to emphasize that they're basically all tied for first place. It's really hard to rank them, and some people, again, it can go, depending on the person you ask, it can go either way. Like, some people might say, okay, this is fine. Some people might say, okay, Ichigo is still better. Let me just, Ichigo is still better, and then some people might say this. Kisuke is very powerful. The only reason why I'm kind of contemplating not putting him number one is because he lacks two killers. And, you know, some people might say killer don't matter, but to me it does. And, you know, compared to what Bruno and Ichigo have, they have two killers. They have Sharpshoot and Marauder, so they can be used in four weeks of GQ. Kisuke can't. And that's why I didn't place him high. But I do want to emphasize how powerful Kisuke is. His SA1, when it comes to Kisuke, isn't that great. But he's SA2 and 3 beautiful. SA2, again, is the best SA2 in the game. It's the exact same strong attack that someone like 6 Anniversary Eisen has, where it's a tracking vortex. It hits so many times, and then the main thing about this character is that you want to inflict status on it, and when you do, you get an 80% SP boost. So even 1 out of 5, this character can hit as hard as these two characters here, 5 out of 5. It's insane. And I'm big at the character. Maybe I should put him number 1. Let me know what you lads think. This character is absolutely insane. And he also is immune to every status zoning. He has a 20% team heal. He's unmatched. Uh, honestly, maybe it's because I don't have him 5-5 five, five that I'm not putting him number 1. But I, I will say again, like I just mentioned, that the reason why I'm not putting him number 1 is because... Yes, he has great survivability, great crowd control... Uh, great damage too. These two characters also have that. Not as much good crowd control compared to this character or survivability, uh, but they can also be used in Extreme Cult more often than not, and they can also be used in 4 weeks of GQ. Especially Bruno. Bruno is one of the cute few characters in the game right now that can pretty much nuke all 5 waves of Guild Quest, which is very important for those that take Guild Quest seriously. So I'm just trying to find the balance between these 3 characters, but yeah, Kisuke is great. Looking at the Ichigo, Lunge SA1, 960 SA2, 
charge SO3 can hit very powerful with the weakening that he does have. 60% Berserker. He hits really hard, especially because he does inflict weakening. And then Bruno 2, a range collision pushback SA1. Not the most ideal strike attack one, but it's not the worst one out there. It's actually pretty good when you do line it up perfectly. SA2, 960. And then SA3 is a full screen strong attack. And then he also does again have bombardment. So that's actually very good. Bit on the lackluster in terms of uh, Berserker value because only 20%. But he was designed for Arena. Not that I'm taking into account Arena, for example. But um, yeah, Bruno's also a very powerful character. Again, as I did mention, I feel like they're all tied for first place and it can really go either way. It really depends on who you ask. And maybe if you lads convince me enough in the comments, I might move Kisuke number one because Kisuke's really powerful. And I, it's, it's hard to rank them because again, I prioritize double killers. I prioritize Sharpshooter, Marauder, which these two characters have. I feel like it's more useful for them being useful in other content outside of just ITIZ, for example, right? So yeah, that's my power list. Now let's move on to speed. Speed is kind of in a bad position right now. They don't have that many great characters, and even the SS tier characters are kind of like, eh, they could be a lot better. So let's talk about it. D tier, bad characters overall. C tier again, eh. B tier, again, invest in them. You might actually want to use them. A tier, we have some solid good characters. Some, again, lack range or lack. I'm actually going to move Nell down. I don't like Nelly. Uh, Nell's eh. Um, a is tier, they just lack damage or range, right? So we have some NAD characters here. For example, we have the Yoroichi, Ikaku, we have someone like, is there any other Nad characters? We have Moe and Tsukushima, and also the Arena Kenpachi. All very powerful Nad characters for PvE content. I put Tsukushima the highest, as he does have Drain and a boost. There are times where Tsukushima can be like your best friend alongside someone like Jusha because of the heals that they both give to each other, or to themselves, because they both inflict Drain. Drain does heal you when you do inflict the stars on them, by the way. Uh, but as far as the Nad characters go in this tier list in A tier, they have good damage output. They just, again, lack guard break for me to put them in S tier, like, you know, for example, the Y Ichigo. Y Ichigo is a Nad character that does have guard break, therefore, in my opinion, he's an S tier character. He hits very hard. He has a debuff Soul Bomb free, so again, if if you want to use him in something like Epic Great, even when he isn't a bonus, you can definitely do that just to allow your team to do a lot of damage. Looking at the other A tier characters, we have some good, a bit outdated SP characters. Maybe I should move some of these characters a bit low to B tier, for example. They do lack the damage output and range compared to some of the higher A tier characters. Uh, there is a somewhat of a big difference between these this bottom row to this top row. They're all actually very good. So Kogato received a very good resurrection this year. That's why I put him in A tier. Uh, Genjo, unfortunately. Uh, potentially could have been S tier, honestly. Um, he just unfortunately doesn't have a good killer. And his whole thing is about having killer. So in a case like this where, you know, you want to have killer to do a lot of damage, but then you have Quincy, which is pretty much the worst killer. But it is been, he has been designed for Droplet Zone, and Droplet Zone does feature a lot of Quincy enemies now and then. So, yeah, decent character. Uh, Shuren. I hope I said his name right. He is a just good Nad character overall. Good SP character. You would be higher, but unfortunately, your strong attacks are quite mediocre from what I've heard. Personally, I've actually never tested this character. Uh, I think he's actually pretty nice. I might argue for him to be a bit higher, but from my experience, I feel like I've, I played with these three characters, and I feel like they're just better. From what I've heard when it comes to Ichigo, so I might be downplaying just a tad bit, um, is that he's not that good. Again, I know exactly how he does play, and unfortunately, when people got their hands on this character, they were disappointed with the strong attack 2, that even though it can be a good strong attack 2, it has a very slow charge time, or startup time, that the fact that it kind of just puts you in place, and it's not that good. Although Ichigo does have Frenzy plus 2, he does inflict 2 star summons, and he also does have a 20% team hill for your entire team. So, uh, eventually, over time, I might put him higher. And I believe he also has an increased chance to inflict star summons, but yeah. Uh, Ichigo, pretty good character overall, definitely could have been a little higher. Had he been given better strong attacks. Uh, moving on to these three, just very solid NAD characters overall. Could argue for these two characters to get put into S tier. Although I feel like they maybe lack something that I would like to see. Retsu, I feel like if she had better strong attacks, I would have put her higher. And then Grimjow does lack. Uh, his SA1 lunge isn't the... Fur it doesn't go the furthest. It's kind of just mediocre lunge for the most part. And then he doesn't fit any status zoom in. So I feel like he's, you know, he's good. He has a 40% Berserker, but he has like no survivability. Or like really anything going for him outside of just somewhat decent damage, which these three characters can also combine, but come with other stuff. Basby, very similar to like Senjumara, gotten better over time, thanks to IT, where he does want to inflict status summons, and he does have an increased chance to inflict status summons, so that's actually very important, especially when you do bring this character into IT. And as far as the speed attribute does go, uh, they don't really have any better options for the Aranka killer, unfortunately, because Aranka killers for speed are kind of eh. 
And even though this character is an S tier, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. He inflicts burn, which isn't ideal, but still a very powerful SP character nonetheless. We went over White Ichigo, which is a very powerful Nudge character with a good strong attack kit to go along with it. And then we have two SP characters, which also coincidentally buff this Byakuya, right? Uh, both of them are very good strong attacks. 3,000 Lem Beam for what I believe, or... Uh, sh Damn, I'm forgetting his name. Ah, uh, Tenjiro. Tenjiro has a lunge SA1, a beam SA2, and a very powerful SA3 in the fact that it's a 1,170 in front of him. Very good. Still holds up. They do fall a bit in the damage output because they both only have like a 20% Berserker. But again, you know, damage you can always fix with Transcendence. You can't fix range, and they have very good range. So very powerful cards overall that, you know, they're not going to get their Resurrection anytime soon. But yeah, they're, they're good. They're good. I think they just stopped being an S, S tier because they lack two killers, and they lack the really insane damage output that some of the other characters do have. Now, Let's talk about SS tier. First, I want to talk about the Jushro, because he is an ad character. Uh, Jushro is great. Very powerful ad character. Pretty much the best normal attack character in the game. He has Drain on every attack, and his SA2 is a boost and a shield, which also has a multi-barrier skill. So it is a plus 5 shield for himself, and a plus 3 shield for his teammates. This character can literally auto any content. If you look at the heart tier list, when we had, you know, someone like Fowl's new battle with Yachtu, for example, she used to be the auto queen. She, when she came out of the game, it changed Brave Souls, right? She was autoing everything. This is like a modern day Yachtu, Unohana. Because he literally autos anything you put him against. Very safely too. One out of five, it doesn't matter. That shield, there's a lot of times the character doesn't get hit. And when he does get hit, he heals back up because his nad, everything just inflicts drain. It, it's insane. This character's insane. Now, let's talk about Byakuya. Byakuya is a character that I feel like is definitely going to fall off as time goes by. Definitely one of the few characters in SS tier that are going to fall off relatively soon. I don't like using him that much. I feel like he, over time, has gotten worse compared to some of the other characters in his tier because he doesn't affect any status elements, which, again, in IT, for example, when you do want to use him there, you do want to be inflicting status elements. His damage output on his SA3 and 1 isn't the most crazy, but I still think it's good. And, again, he is being hard carried by his SA2, which is similar to Kisuke and the 6th anniversary eyes, and he was actually the first character to introduce this strong attack to, where it is that tracking vortex. He has really good crowd control, doesn't have the most, like insane survivability because he isn't immune to everything uh, anything at all um he's over just a very solid character because he does have bombardment too so that's good for new king he has two killers good crowd control for any new players out there that are maybe trying to tackle hard gq for the first time where let's say you're bringing two nad characters and they die having a biakia vortex is always going to be helpful but again as i mentioned as time goes by i feel like he's definitely going to start falling off because no status zones and his sa1 and free aren't really going to keep him up there for too long you know his sa2 can only do so much for a character and that's why i have him at the bottom of ss team then lastly let's talk about noel noel is a character that a lot of people are a bit disappointed by because again she doesn't have the most ideal kit she has the exact same sa1 as biakia which is pretty much the worst sa1 in the game she has a sa2 which is similar to the itigo although it does have a better startup time and the sa3 is a full screen so when you look at your kit you would think okay she's not the best character in speed that speed has to offer but when you look at what she can do, it's insane. So very similar to Nini, she has two killers. In this case, Noel has Hollow and also no affiliation killer. She has an increased chance to inflict status event against those two uh, affiliations. She also, when she does inflict a status event, she gets an 80% SP boost, just like Kisuke, for example. And that allows her to hit so hard that it doesn't matter about her strong attacks. It really doesn't matter. She hits very hard and she can clear stuff like IT, IZ very, very easily. And at the same time, she's the hardest hitting nuke in the game because she also does have Bombardment, which is really powerful when it comes to your soul bomb damage but she also has you know weakening on that soul bomb and she also has that 80 percent sp boost so she hits so hard on a soul bomb that it just makes her the best speed character in the game in my opinion like it, she can just do what the other characters can't do but again i feel like it can definitely go either way for juicer or some might actually say juicer would be number one because he can just auto anything which is you know it's fair but uh noel's great noel's great and those that have her understand how powerful she is so uh yeah that's the speed attribute there now let's move on to mind and mind is lacking mind is really lacking like if you look at some of the other like ss tier for some of the other attributes for example a lot of them are new characters mind hasn't really got a new ss character for a very long time so again d tier once more mediocre characters c tier yeah b tier are characters that you could use um let's say for example don Kenobi. i i'm very tempted to put him in a tier because yes he does have a bad kit it's not perfect what he can do is great you know he's a 20 percent team off for his entire team every time you've been to another room he has the increased chance to inflict status limits against two affiliations he has two killers he's a decently 
average character. Uh, but the problem with him is that his damage output is very inconsistent. So uh, I really do believe that you have to kind of transcend these characters to make them usable, especially Duncan Odie. Duncan Odie Max Transcended is uh, is not bad. It's not bad, but not comparable to the AT characters. So looking at AT, we have some good NAD cards overall. Kirio's semi decent. She has, uh, you know, Team Hill, Party Boost, for example. Um, any other NAD characters? Izuru is very good too. Yami is also a pretty good NAD character. Uh, arena characters are kind of slept upon. No one really talks about how good arena characters are in actual PvE content because they're not too bad. Uh, Jackie's also a very solid character, just likes Havoc. Uh, Grimmy lacks a good SA1 and, you know, good damage output compared to new characters. But overall, pretty good. It has the team revive and also immunity to everything. Uh, Chad, a very solid premium character. Same goes for mostly everyone here. Ginger received a very good resurrection. So did this uh, Barragon. Overall, just very solid characters that I think are definitely worth using and then let's talk about the top two characters so Ichigo again very similar to Kenpachi I feel like it's just gotten better over time in my opinion uh more so falling off I feel like he's just gotten more useful especially considering how rare transformer specials actually are and there's probably a reason for that because imagine we had new characters that came out with transforming specials it'd be insane so I feel like that's probably why they haven't done it but I definitely would like to see transformer specials return and then looking at the top of eight, we have someone like the tag team, you know, which is so fun. Only reason why I didn't put them in here is because they don't have a Havoc. But maybe I should put them in here. Maybe I should, because they do have double killers, which is great as far as characters go, right? Double killers means more usability. They have good strong attacks. They have good damage output. So maybe I should put them higher. And the same can be said for Giriko. Maybe I should put Giriko top of A. I might just do that, actually. Or maybe I should put Yuri Joseph on higher. Let me know what you guys think. I feel like Giriko is just a very good support character. I feel like he's, uh, you know, he has SA1 and 2, which is a B uh, lunge forward. It's not the most ideal strong attack too. But the SA2 is a boost and a shield, which gives a plus 5 for himself, a plus 3 for his team. It's very good. He also has a rank killer, and he does more damage in cop content when he is, when he has killer. So, you know, just like Ginjo, for example, Ginjo doesn't really ever get killer. Giriko does. So, Gary Giriko is a very powerful support character. Good, someone good to have in IT, for example. Just one Giriko is great to have because you almost just never die at that point. Uh, Shinji, very good resurrection. In realistic, he just lacked the damage output. He picked up Recharge 2, which was great for this character because that's what he also did lack. And he already has good strength. Attack. It's like very powerful uh, range and damage that this character now has. For an SP character to be at like it, that came out like three or so years ago. Maybe I'm rating him too high. Maybe he should also be the top of A tier. Um, but I feel like, yeah, he's actually just pretty solid. Also useful in Guild Quest now too because of his upgrades. Uh, Koga, very powerful range. Like not damage because he lacks any Berserker, which is unfortunate. And that's why I might put him down to A tier over time. But the range this character has is just still insane. It's almost unmatched to a certain extent. And this character came out right after the fourth anniversary. Um, again, when it comes to damage versus range... Range you can't fix with Transcendence. Damage you can. So even though, yes, he lacks Berserker, getting his character to, you know, level 10 SP, for example, T20, you know, maybe full stam, it's pretty good. He's a very solid character. Kenpachi, the newest character on the scene right now, is a character that I feel like is just a very good NAD character. Again, he is a melee-based NAD character with guard break, good damage output. Why not put him in S tier, right? He's very similar to most of the other NAD characters also in S tier that have guard break. Uh, unfortunately, though, again, keep in mind he hasn't been designed for pve he was designed for brave battles but at the same time because they gave him guard break it makes him useful in pve content he has two immunities he also does have last ditch that makes him overall just a very solid character to use again i wouldn't really recommend using him in cop content however who i would recommend using in cop content is kisuke maybe i should put kisuke higher i'm putting kisuke higher than candace let's do it so candace just a very powerful character very similar to the swimsuit nemu nemu was basically a copy of this character lunch sa1 960 sa2 full screen sa3 paralysis and everything weak in defense Hits pretty hard too, which is a very solid character overall. Kisuke, uh, basically, is very similar to Tokinada with the fact, without the fact that he doesn't inflict a boost and he doesn't fix stars on it and he doesn't have a transformer special. But this character can pretty much auto any cop content. Uh, I've autoed I2 with him, I've auto IZ with him, and he's just a very powerful knight character. Range Flurry Guard Break is a very powerful combo, and I like it, so I put him in S tier. Shuntui, I don't like. Uh, although, I, again, I don't like him. Uh, I, you know, I said he's one of the most overrated characters because I feel like people put him a bit too high, but he's very solid too. Very powerful SA1. It's pretty much the best SA1 beam in the game. Very similar to 6th Anniversary Aizen. SA3 is a charged draw attack. Can do a lot of damage because he does inflict weakening. He has a chance to inflict weakening every 5 seconds. And he has good immunities overall. Just a very strong character. What I don't like is that he doesn't have a good SA2. It's almost useless. No, it's not. He has good crowd control, but, uh, you know, compared to the characters that have the tracking vortex, like, you know, the is 5th Anniversary Byakuya, the Kisuke, the 6th Anniversary Aizen, they have an, a 960 in front of them into a Vortex. 
This shows we does it. He had he doesn't have the first bar. He just has the vortex, which is kind of like luster because if he did have the 960 in front, instant SS. Unfortunately, he doesn't. So I'm putting him in S tier. I don't like his S tier. It killed it for me, and that's why I feel like he's just pretty good. Although I feel like a character that's kind of underrated to a certain extent is is Shinji. I don't see many people talk about Shinji. Shinji's great. He has um, status reversal, so when you do inflict a status element, he heals back up. So not full HP, but heals a lot of HP, and he reflects the status element back to the enemies. So this character can almost never get inflicted by a status element unless you walk onto a, a puddle that he's not immune to. He does have two minutes old. That is great. He has like an 80% Berserker. He's, he hits very, very hard. And his SA 1 and 2... Which is very similar to someone like Shuei, for example, who I also put in S tier. SA1 is a lunge, SA2 is like a vacuum type of vortex, and his SA3 is a full screen. But the thing about him is that his, his like, the way the SA1 and 2 work, it just feels different. Even though his SA1 also has very similar range to other characters that have a lunge SA1, his one has, like, really good range, because he hits around him and then goes forward. He's actually a really powerful character, and I feel like... Him lacking maybe two killers or that something extra to take him into SST is what is stopping me from putting him in SST. So, uh, literally the cusp of being in SST. Shinji's great. Very powerful character. And then now let's talk about these two characters. Nuo and Ichigo has been a hot debate on who is actually better. One of the only reasons why people would say Noelle is better than Ichigo is because her SA2 recharge is faster, therefore she's better. Well, I just don't think that's the case. Like, you know, people when the people that say that, they don't look to what Ichigo can bring to the the team, right? So, they both have a, almost the exact same kit. Both have a 3000 length beam, both have a 960 SA2, and both have a 1200 full screen SA3. Only difference is that Noelle's SA1 startup time is a tad bit slower, kind of kills the character for me, but she's still great, and Ichigo's SA2 is a boost move, while Ichigo's soul bomb does inflict uh, instant kill, right? They both hit very hard. Uh, no has like an 80% Berserker with the built-in recharge. Uh, Ichigo has 60% Berserker with the SA2 boost, which helps his team. Uh, the reason why I put Ichigo higher is because he has... He has immunities. He has better survivability. He has, you know, DR built in, which is great. He has two immunities too, which is great. And I feel like the SA2 isn't that big of a difference. I definitely prioritize Ichigo's survivability over someone like Noel, who basically plays the exact same time as Ichigo. Like, there's very, there's a little, very little difference between the two when it comes to clear time. So, yeah, two very solid characters, both with double killers, both hitting very hard, good strong attacks. There's literally almost no reason to ever use them. They are both, unfortunately, do lack, you know, status elements, which is an ideal for IT, for example, but they both make up with the damage output that they have. And, you know, especially for Ichigo with the boost, he's always, he's never not going to be useful. If you do play IT, you're almost going to always have one Ichigo on your team, regardless, regardless of the killer that you're going against. So, that's the mind tier list. Now, let's finish up with the technique one. The one that people have probably been waiting for. So, again, once more, D tier, meh, C tier, meh, B tier, eh, you know, maybe if you transcend them, you can use them. Uh, a tier, Pretty solid characters overall. Uh, Kenpachi, I, I know a lot of people hate on, but I needed you lads to understand why Kenpachi gets hate. The reason why he gets hate is because you're forced to use him in co-op content where characters like this aren't supposed to be used. If you had to use someone like this Hiyori or Kukaku, where did I place her? Uh, or any other NAD character in general, especially NAD-based ones, Kukaku's here. If you were forced to use them, they would also get equally as much hate. Because you don't want to use them in co-op content. They're not designed for that. Uh, so yeah, very solid NAD characters overall. Uh, especially this Sergeant and Nelly. I was actually very close to putting them in S tier. But again, once more, they don't have guard breaks, so I didn't want to put them. But uh, this Sergeant has insane damage output, right? Uh, I put the two Urus together. I feel like the uh, Thousand Blood ones are a tad bit better. Maybe they should be in B tier too. Like, this Urus is kind of mad damage-wise. It's kind of eh, but I just thought like, you know, they're not too bad to be an A tier. Uh, the Aizun and also the Soifon received very good resurrections. Same goes with this Ichigo. Just very powerful SP characters all around that just have something that these S tier characters do lack, right? Uh, Grimjow, very powerful attacks, but just lacks the range, and I don't like his survivability. This is a character that wants to stay at full stand, but has a hard time doing it. And then Gen lacks Havoc, right? Now, going to S tier, that character with Guard Break. So, uh, instant S tier for me. Uh, also, boost SA2 with the built-in recharge. Could also recharge it very fast. Rurika is just a ranged character. Also, Nad Guard Break character. So, instantly just higher than Owetsu because she can do co-op content that Owetsu can't do. Uh, Mayuri just lacks a good killer. 
you know, he has a spot of kill, not ideal, but he does have good short attacks, good damage output, also automatic revival on the soul bomb is great. Okira is a pretty good SP character once more, good short attacks all around, good damage output, poise, pierce barrier too, uh, also pretty good in PvP, we will have a PvP to us in a couple of days time, stay tuned for that. Just a very solid SP character in terms of PvE content, I just feel like these characters are just a tad bit better than him, so, uh, Kusaka is pretty good, good SA1, good SA2, good SA3, uh, also has a 20% team buff, or 20% damage buff to your entire team when you inflict the stasm that's great Tsukushima is also an arena character very similar to this uh okura but the big difference is the really cool skills that okura gets is only an arena but Tsukushima keeps it in pve content he has poise he has long stride very powerful sa1 and free sa2 is the shockwave attack which does bring him down just a tad bit had he had a better sa2 i would have put him in the top of s tier uh, he also does inflict drain so he can heal he has full stand damage so with the drain that he does have you can easily stay at full stand i really like when they do stuff for that and he does have some good immunity so overall just a very solid sp character that i don't see a lot of people talk about mainly because it's Tsukushima and he also just came up recently as an arena banner not that many people really talk about arena characters when it comes to, again pve content then we have someone like the orahime orahime is really really good she is um the best one of the best supports in the game and i would have said the best support in the game and she's definitely up there but then like unahana exists now which is unfortunate for orihime so orihime's whole thing is that she has a good damage output because she's like a 40 percent berserker um, good strong attack range and damage and her sa2 is a team boost which is great and also a team heal which is also great. And then she also has a 20% team every time you're into another room. So she's healing you every time you go into another room. And she's also healing you every time you use that SA2. It's really good. And at the same time, she can also do good damage for herself. Like, this is this is like a support character that we've never really seen before. Like, even though this uh, Unahane is definitely a more better support character, uh, this Orihime is also not far behind. Like, she's actually pretty good. Nemu, though, I just put higher because... Um, She's really good for IT, you know, she has the holo killer, good damage output, charge SA3, better SA1, she does have the price and everything, and then she has an increased chance for fake to start as the one when you go against holo enemies, so, very good character. So now let's talk about the last two characters of this entire tier list video. Retsu versus Ichigo. This is something that I did showcase the other day, the, the Retsu, I saw a lot of people say who should, who's better, and I'm also leaning on the side of Arbic Ichigo, but let's just put a number on it, right? If Retsu is a 9.9, .9, Ichigo is like a 10 out of 10, right? That's just how it is. Or like, if Ichigo, if Unohana is a 10 out of 10, Ichigo is like a 10.1 out of 10, right? It's just how it is. That's like, they're very close, and they're, they're both basically tied for first place. They both do things great for each other, right? So, uh, in Retsu's case, very good SA1, good SA2, very good SA3. Her SA3 is a charged strong attack, which hits very hard because she has friendly plus 2, plus 20% berserker, plus 20% full stam, and drain on everything besides her SA3 to keep her at full stam. But her SA3 is also a charged strong attack, which also heals. So when you don't charge that SA3, it's a 20% team mill. When you do charge it, it's a 40% team mill. And because how powerful Retsu is as a damage dealer, you have a lot of Retsu playing in IT right now, IZ. Any content, that you, there's tech content, you have an, a Retsu join your room. And just having her means you can almost never die. Unfortunately, because of how much like healing capabilities that she does have, she doesn't have any status immunities, which does kind of suck. And it's probably why I'm also putting Ichigo above Retsu, because she can get frozen, weakened, paralyzed, burned, for example. But she can also just heal it back up. But I do want to also mention that she doesn't have any status immunities, which kind of does suck. But everything else about this Red 2 is absolutely insane. She has Marauder, and also she doesn't have two killers, which, you know, Ichigo does have. So Ichigo has two killers. He has complete status immunity to everything, which is great. He has Long Stride. He has Poise. He has a good SA1, 2, and 3. And he also has Bombardment. So you can use them to nuke waves, complete waves in Guild Quest. And they're very comparable. They both do different things. You know, this Retsu has a very powerful damage output, more so than Ichigo. But then, you know, Retsu can't nuke all five waves of Guild Quest. But then, you know, Ichigo can't heal himself like Retsu can. So it can go either way. It really depends on, again, once more, very similar to the power situation. Uh, it really depends on who you ask. But for me, I feel like they're both almost tied for first place. They're both very powerful characters. And with that said, lads... That was the Taylor's video for the start of 2022. If you made it to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching the entire video. Hopefully, I was able to keep you entertained. Hopefully, I wasn't speaking too fast. I know that's one thing a lot of people do say, but, you know, when you have a Taylor's video like this, that's already 50 minutes long. If I didn't speak fast, it'd be like an hour and a half long, so I just had to. Uh, going forward into the future, when we do update it, I won't be talking about every character like I do, or the characters that I did just talk about right now. You know, going forward into the future, I'll be talking about the S and SS tier only, and that's about it. I will always be moving up and down characters based on the feedback, so feel free to leave any disagreements 
screen within the comments below. This is something that we will improve over time. Uh, because I do want to do this almost every second or third month for the most part. We do get a bunch of new characters. That said, I will have a Brave Battle tier list coming out in a couple of days' time. We won't need to update that until maybe the same anniversary. So I hope you guys look forward to that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.